A recent study found that the average cost of having a child per year is over $18,000. As a financial minimalist, I'm all about optimization and saving money. So recently we had to make one of the hardest decisions we've ever made. And I had to let my daughter know that after five amazing months, it was time to move out. All right, I think we got it. Let's cut. Are you good? Yeah, but this, this seems like a little bit much. I don't, I don't know if anybody's going to buy this. You know what? If anything, I don't think we're going far enough. We need views. You know, I'm just saying it seems like you're taking it a little bit too far. Fine, I'll just do it the old fashioned way by providing value. But for the record, I think my way was a lot more fun. We don't have any pets. Now, the average cost for owning a dog is between $1,500 and $9,000 per year. Now, well, this is definitely worth it for some people, and I know it brings a lot of people a lot of happiness and joy. Uh, for us, it's just not something that is really worth it. So over the past couple of years, we've been being extremely frugal uh, so that we could leave our jobs, which we eventually did get more house hacks, which we're on our third one right now, and then have a child, uh, which we did a couple months ago. And we just looked at that expense as uh, like extremely high, plus there's the time and responsibility involved in that that could be hundreds of hours a year and while some people get a lot out of having a pet uh, we just don't we really value that freedom uh, while we're home and then also the opportunity to travel instead of having a pet so for us it's just not something that's worth it now the average American gets about 11% of their daily caloric intake from fast food I'm not gonna lie that like kind of uh, annoys me a little bit I know there's a lot of reasons for people to have fast food and it's easier and whatever um, but your health is one of the most important things like if you haven't got your health you haven't got anything and for me over the past like 10 years I have not eaten from McDonald's Burger King anything like that uh, there's been times where everybody else has gone in my group and I'll literally like I'm just gonna starve even though I haven't eaten in six hours and I'll just wait till I get home as opposed to eating something from there because there's been this rule that I'm just not gonna do it uh, and I want to stick with that rule from this kind of like financial minimalist mindset it's not all about saving money. It's also about how do you feel 20 minutes after you eat that $2 burger? And I wanna feel as good as I can every day. And that means spending a little bit more time preparing and making sure I always bring food with me and money getting higher quality foods that are gonna make me feel better. So for the most part, I just don't eat fast food. Buying an extended warranty. Now, when I buy anything, whether it's like a phone or a laptop, they will try to sell you an extended warranty. And if you're anything like me, you don't actually use it. That's why they, they offer this is because it's another form uh, for them to make money. Like I used to buy extended warranties and I realized that I have no idea where I bought my laptop or my phone or my lights or my camera equipment. I just don't remember. And if something breaks, I'm, I'm not going to remember if I have a warranty or not or who it's through. So I end up just buying another one anyways, or repairing it. So if you are somebody who is super organized, who can remember all those sorts of things, then it, it might be a good idea. But for most people, it's not gonna make you as much money as you're gonna end up paying for it. And I don't know, it's just not something that I choose to do. Shopping as a pastime. Now the average person spends about 25 minutes per workday shopping. Now part of that is driving to and from different stores and that takes time then you walk around you have to get one thing and, and it's like all this time that goes into it or uh, it also gets racked up by going to TJ Maxx and just walking around for two hours and then you have 17 things that you didn't actually need but somehow you have also shopping on Amazon on your phone or other places online it's just something that we're trying uh, really hard to avoid because for the most part uh, most of the money that we spend on stuff doesn't lead to uh, a lot of happiness some of it does but especially shopping as a pastime when you get bored scrolling through sales or walking through the clearance section or impulse buying or when you're at the store or pretty much just really shopping without a list every time we go to the grocery store or we go into any store or we're looking for something online i pretty much just like write it down ahead of time so i know that i'm not going to get anything extra that i don't need and this saves me a lot of time and a lot of money by the way if you're enjoying this video and getting any value it would mean a ton if you would subscribe and hit the little notification thing uh it, it really helps me out holiday gifts 
Americans plan to spend $997 this year on themselves and their families' holiday gifts. Honestly, this always feels pretty weird uh, to talk about. I feel a little bit like Scrooge McDuck, but it's also something that's pretty important. Like we sat down and talked with a lot of family uh, and especially like me and my wife. And what we decided was that we're not really doing holiday uh, gifts anymore unless it's something that we like actually need. Like if we need a coat and it's uh, getting near winter, we're like, I'm gonna get you this and we'll call it a Christmas present or whatever because they need the coat anyways. But we stopped doing the, I'm gonna get one thing for everybody that I know or for all of my family members even though we're all adults and if we need something, we can get something and instead we're doing things like taking trips together, which is a lot more enjoyable or doing some type of experience together and all pitching in on that or just doing nothing and being okay with that. Like we still do stuff for like my nieces and nephews and we'll do stuff for my daughter eventually, but you don't need to get something for everybody just because that's what everybody does. Posting the highlights. Now, this is something that I had a problem with for a while because when you go on Instagram or Facebook or wherever, you see the best polished Photoshop moments of other people's lives, you feel like you need to do that. And if you do anything cool, you're like, for the gram, gotta take a picture of this beach or me doing this cool thing and that's what you post. In general, I've been really trying to move away from posting the highlights and following these people who are always trying to sell you something or show off and in turn that like, isn't great for you, at least for me. And instead, like posting the the lowlights and me being weird and stuff that I'm struggling with and real stuff that's gonna help people or humble myself a little bit. Like anything I post like on Instagram, I try to make sure that it actually provides some value and it's not just some form of validation for myself seeing how many likes I can get and that's where you get a lot of your self worth, but being very careful and curating our social media so that we're not always trying to get sold stuff and we're not trying to get validation through it. Just to fit in. All right, this might have taken you too far. This is actually a Meredith's shirt, which is uh, a woman's, so it, it, it doesn't fit. <clears throat> All right, we're back. A lot of times people make bad decisions financially because they're trying to fit in, whether that's having the newest phone or going out and having drinks with their friends, even when they're trying to save money so that they can like actually change their lives or going to college or getting a new car, or just doing whatever the people around you are doing. Like you're the average of the five people that you hang out with most. And because of that, who you surround yourself with will really change a lot about you. So something that I've been really, uh, geez, working, working hard on not doing is just because I go out with people uh, doesn't mean I need to get a drink or eat unhealthy stuff. Like if everybody's having pizza, but I don't wanna have pizza, I'm not gonna have it. I'm okay with being that guy who's a little bit different and just doing things that are right for me. We don't have flowers besides, uh, besides that one. Actually, it, it came with the house, all right? I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of uh, a weird one, but when we moved here, we had the options of planting like bushes and flowers and stuff like that. But instead we went with fruit trees. We have uh, like a, a million pears right here. Like this tree's like, like fallen over. I don't know if you can see that. But we also planted raspberries and blackberries and blueberries and strawberries and a bunch of different vegetables. And I realize this might be a little bit extreme, but we want everything we have to serve a purpose. Like if we get a dog someday, it'll be because we have a farm and we need it to take care and watch out for the chickens and whatever. And if we spend money buying plants, it would be really nice if they could give us fruit because fruit is like insanely expensive. And or if we're gonna grow something, we can grow something that is beautiful and also provides something for us. This might be a little bit extreme, but when we came here, instead of buying uh, a bunch of bushes and flowers, we got a bunch of things that has given us food pretty much all year long. Paying for housing. Now, don't get me wrong, uh, we do actually pay a little bit to live here, but instead of buying a single family home, which technically we could have afforded after getting the first two triplexes that we've been living in the past couple of years, we got a single family home with an in-law. So the tenants that live right over there pay for over half our mortgage to live here. So we're able to live in a nice place that's in a better neighborhood than we probably could have afforded for like the same price as like the crappiest one bedroom apartment in our city. Uh, and doing this house hacking for the past uh, four years now has saved us tens of thousands of dollars. It's been the thing that's allowed us to save up and invest more and both me and my wife to leave our job and me to do YouTube full time 
it all came from this decision that I'm not gonna pay for all of my own housing. Uh, I need to figure out other ways to be creative where, where I risk everything that I have to buy these properties and I fix them up and I try to be a great landlord and in return, I'm able to have other people cover uh, some of my living expenses, giving me a lot more freedom in return for that risk and that service. There's supposed to be a car right here, but Meredith has it. So yeah, I don't own my own car. And I know this is not gonna be for everyone, um, but the cost of owning a car on average is about $10,000 a year. So we realized if we can go from two cars down to one car, we can cut an insane amount out of our budget because we don't spend that much to start with. So it made things a lot uh, easier for us financially and in return once or twice a month, it's kind of annoying when we can't both go separate places at the same time. But with a little bit of scheduling, uh, we've pretty much figured it out. Again, I know this isn't for everybody. We probably know one other family who has children who doesn't have two cars. But if you look at the expenses that go along with that, you might realize that you can work a lot less or switch to maybe a lower paying job that works from home simply by getting rid of that second car, especially if it's a new car that's extremely expensive to own. So it's just not something that adds a ton uh, of value to us. But speaking of adding value, I hope this video added some value to you. If it did, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and I'll see you next week.